Hey everyone, this is the first video in the Crash Course Geometry series and in this video we'll be going over three major concepts of geometry. We'll be going over um, parallel lines and transversals and what the different angles are called when a parallel line, when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal. We'll be going over areas of two dimensional shapes and we'll be going over solid geometry. Um, this course is designed to give you the material fast and make sure you know everything in geometry, not as a formal proof based course. So we're just going to go over definitions first. So I've drawn two parallel lines, and we know they're parallel because they have this symbol, the two arrows, and a transversal, which is another line that intersects both. Now I've labeled all the angles, so this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Now let's go over definitions. A and B are supplementary angles. That's going to be my angle symbol. Because they add up to 180 degrees and because they form a line when we take them together. They form this line. By the same argument, C and D are also, also supplementary. A and C are supplementary. Um, now A and D are vertical angles. Vertical angles you know because they'll be on opposite sides like this. A and D, B and C here, or E and H, F and G. Uh, vertical angles are always equal, always. So how we can denote that is by drawing similar angle markings in here. And to denote these, we can draw two angle markings just like that. Um, moving on. So we have um, A and H. Okay, so this one here and this one here are... alternate exterior angles. We can tell because this one is over here and at the very opposite corner of our diagram here is the other angle. They're exterior, they're opposite exterior. Um, and now looking at D and E, these are called alternate uh, interior angles. So E and D are Our alternate interior angles. And so we have to know something about these. Alternate interior angles are always the same. So D equals E, or the measure of angle D equals measure of angle E. And same thing with alternate exterior angles. The measure of angle A equals the measure of angle H. Okay? So that's basically when we draw a diagram, we know what they're called. So if you ever see them in the future, that's what they're going to be called. Uh, moving on, we're going to go to 2D shapes. So we're just going to find out the formulas for major 2D shapes. So we have our, let's draw them all first. We have our triangle. We have our trapezoid. We have our parallelogram. We have our circle. We have our rectangle. And that should be our 2D shapes. So I'm just going to write down the formula for that area of each one inside. So one half base times uh, okay higher base times height, where this is the base and the height. Make sure you take the height as the perpendicular distance, not just this distance or any distance. It has to be perpendicular. So one half base times height will give you the area of this. Um, on the trapezoid, this is going to be base one, base two, and the height again is perpendicular. So the Area is given by one half base one plus base two times the height. So basically, the average of the bases multiplied by the height. Parallelogram, which is simply base times height, where this is the base, this is the height. For a circle, it's pi r squared, where this is the radius, of course. For a rectangle, it's simply length times width. And for the special case of a rectangle, which is a square, it's going to be side squared because length and width are the exact same. So that is our major areas. Now we'll just go over solids. So our major solids that we're going to deal with, we'll draw them in a different color. Our major solids are going to be the cylinder. I'm going to have sphere. I'm going to have our cone. And we're going to have our, say, rectangle.
rectangular prism. Um, and we're gonna have a pyramid. Those are gonna be our major solids. Uh, let's just find out the volume of all of them. So where this is R and this is H, volume equals pi R squared H. For the sphere, there's only one quantity, it's the radius, so volume equals 4 thirds pi radius cubed. For our cone, we have two quantities, we have the radius and we have the height, so it's going to be 1 third pi radius squared height. For our rectangular prism, we have three dimensions, length, um, width, height. Let's relabel these, I think I labeled these incorrectly. Um, this will be our height, this will be our length, and this will be our width. So this is our width. So either way, it's going to be volume equals length, width, height. And for the special case where this is a cube where length, width, and height are all the same, we can call them S. It's going to be S cubed. And lastly, for the pyramid, volume equals one third base area times height. And this one's the one that's not so unique because the base area could be anything. I drew here as a square or a rectangle, but it could easily be, say, a... A, it could be a different polygon, it could be like a triangle where we have a tetrahedron, it could be a pentagon, and actually this cone is actually just a special case, because the base area of the circle is pi r squared, multiplied by the height. So, those are our basic formulas for the volume, so this is the first video, until next time.